Hey, hey everyone, it's your Peacekeeper, and it's time for the next video in our How to Play series on the Japanese Cruiser Line. This is the Tier 3 Tenryu Class Cruiser. The Tenryu Class Light Cruiser was a class of 8 planned and 2 completed light cruisers built for the Imperial Japanese Navy in 1917 and 1919. The 2 completed cruisers are Tenryu and Tatsuda and both were named after rivers in Japan. The design borrowed heavily from British designs due to the Anglo-Japanese alliance during the time of their design. The goal for the Tenryu class was to be a destroyer flotilla leader cruiser similar to the U.S. Omaha class and the Royal Navy Sea class cruisers. The class was basically an enlarged destroyer utilizing 14 centimeter guns, that were part of the Issei class battleship secondaries. They were mounted in single mounts along the center line, which unfortunately heavily restricted their firing arcs and only allowed one gun to fire straight ahead or straight to the rear. This would definitely come back to bite them in the rear because this design was heavily criticized throughout its entire operational life as being both too weak and in terms of armament and in armor to act as a cruiser. So the, the, the remaining six cruisers that were ordered after the completion of Tatsuta were canceled. And the, there were actually plans in 1937 to replace the main armament of the Tenryus with uh, 127 millimeter dual gun mounts similar to what would be on the later Japanese destroyers, in addition to anti-aircraft fire directors and 25mm guns. However, this change was cancelled as well in favor of the Akizuki-class anti-aircraft destroyers, which are in-game, interestingly enough. In spite of their relatively weak armor and armament, both ships served in a number of notable battles both before and during World War II. Both were present during the Siberian intervention prior to World War II in which Japan, U.S., Canada, and several other World War I allied powers supported the White Russian Movement, which is the non-communist movement in Russia at the time, against the communist revolution that was going on at the time. Both ships participated at the Battle of Wake Island, the Solomon Island Campaign, Battle at New Guinea and Tulagi, as well as the Battle of Savo Islands. Both ships would be sunk after fighting in the naval battles at Guadalcanal by submarines, with Tenryu being sunk by the USS Albacore in 1943 and Tatsuda by the USS Sand Lance in 1944. In terms of their in-game play style, Tenryu is best played like a destroyer with a citadel, which means Boy, she disappears awfully quick if you expose anything resembling a broadside. Let's talk about that for a moment with the armor layout. You see, that looks like she's got a pretty decent amount of side armor there. There's only one problem. This is not Citadel. This is not Citadel. That's not the problem. This is Citadel. This is Citadel. But wait, there's more. This is also your citadel. So your citadel literally encompasses this entire center section of this ship. Also to add unfortunateness is the end caps are only 38 millimeters thick, which means any fire coming in at an angle enough to penetrate the extremely weak front 6 millimeter hole plating means that you're basically guaranteed to get a citadel hit so long as the shell detonates in this region. That is extremely easy to do with both high explosive and armor piercing rounds. Tenryu is very weak in comparison. Her gunnery is acceptable, especially if you're looking to start a lot of fires, but the accuracy is really poor at longer ranges. She does have a pretty usable 12.4k range though, which is kind of nice. She also has six 7km torpedoes, which are also very useful. However, both of these things, uh, her guns and her torpedoes, have really rather poor firing arcs, which exposes that citadel if you want to bring them all to bear. So you definitely need to pay attention to how you play this ship. My recommended tactic is what I'm going to call an S pattern. Basically, you're... Uh, you know, shooting as your guns come up to bear, but you're constantly maneuvering to try and avoid getting hit entirely. And you'll see this get put to good use in the battle video that we're about to go talk, uh, go watch. Uh, in terms of AA, might as well not even have it. And 
in spite of all that, it's still a really fun ship, and she's still very, very capable of doing big damage and, and overall being very versatile. It's just her play style, especially in the constant up-tiering that you're going to have with a Tier 3 ship, you're going to be stuck in Tier 4 fights all the time. Uh, you're going to have to learn how and when to press the engagement in this. And it's a really good tactic to learn for cruisers because it doesn't just apply to Tenryu. It applies to every cruiser in the game. And so it's a good ship to learn on if that's what you're looking to do. Let's talk about stats. She has 17,700 hit points. Her max armor is 63 millimeters. Again, that's going to be the belt armor over the Citadel, but that Citadel is so huge. That 63 millimeters of armor might as well not exist. The main battery is four single 140 millimeter guns. You can see there's two mounted at the front, two mounted at the back. Again, their gun firing arcs are really bad. Really, really bad. They have a 12.4 kilometer firing range, but they have a 12% fire chance. That feels like a 60% fire chance. A six second reload time and a relatively quick 19.6 second 180 degree turn time. Like I mentioned before, she does have torpedoes. They are two triple launchers. They are seven kilometer in range, 57 knots. They do 9,067 damage and they have a 1.2 kilometer detection range. In terms of anti-aircraft, again, these might as well not even exist. <laughs> Seriously, she has three anti-aircraft guns. Two 13 millimeters, they're single 13 millimeter type 93 guns, and then a single 80 millimeter 40 caliber gun that uh, three kilometer range, two and five TPS. It's not worth mentioning. Unfortunately, Tenryu does see carriers, which is really rather unfortunate for her because she has zero protection from them. In terms of maneuverability, 32.5 knot top speed, 560 meter turning radius, 4 second rudder shift time. Very, very destroyer-like in her handling. Concealment range by sea is going to be 8 kilometers, and that's without any concealment dropping mods with the exception of the camo, which is quite impressive. With the concealment expert, you know, we're going to drop that down basically another kilometer down to 7k, which means this thing can almost stealth torp. Not too shabby. Detection range by air of 4.8 kilometers. Let's talk about modules. In terms of upgrade modules, Main Armaments Mod 1 is going to be the staple for pretty much the entire line. I, I, I just, again, I... The chances of your main battery getting taken out or your torpedo tubes getting taken out, uh, this helps bring, it gives them more hit points, it decreases the chance of them being, you know, damaged so that you can't use them and you have to burn a repair party to get them back. It also decreases the time it takes to repair them without using that repair party consumable, which is nice. Uh, auxiliary armaments mod 1 and magazine mod 1, really not all that useful at this tier. We don't have any secondaries or AA really worth keeping, and it... <sighs> Detonation flags are far more effective than this. <laughs> In the second slot here, uh, I'm going to... Propulsion Systems Mod 1. That's what I run. And I've explained this in other videos before. But the reason for this is I find losing my engines to be a bigger detriment than losing my steering. As long as I have engines, I can always maneuver, even with a, a rudder that is stuck in a direction. I at least can change my speed to try and avoid getting hit. If I lose my rudder, once you stop moving, you're still a sitting duck. You don't, you can't just crawl away. But uh, and really, either of these two skills, depending on how you want to play it, are acceptable. Damage Control Systems Mod 1 on a cruiser, I just, you don't, get started on fire or flooding often enough and when you do usually you have your repair party consumable up quick enough that it, it's not really worth taking that mod enough of me blabbing let's go into a battle video all right so as i mentioned all of these battles are for tier three ships are pretty much all guaranteed to be a tier four fight which is exactly what we're in and uh, lots of battleships on the enemy team. We got three Wyomings and an Isuzuchi on the enemy team. They have lost a destroyer in favor of an additional cruiser, which is a tier three. It was a Bogatier. There is a Tenryu on their team as well. Uh, it is interesting to note, though, that uh, if you are shooting at another enemy Tenryu, if they are broadside to you and you have AP loaded, you can definitely do some pretty good damage with it. The map is straight, and on this map, there's not really a good strategy overall for this. 
Uh, generally speaking, I like to take, you know, and go towards whichever cap I'm on. Uh, so for us down here, we're at C. Uh, if I was spawning on the north side, I'd go to A. It's very rare that I would go to B right off the bat. Generally speaking, I find that uh, there's a lot of cruiser and destroyer presence at B. Being as we are the lowest in this tier, I'm really not all that interested in, in being the first one there. Here's a quick look at those gun angles so you can see just how bad they are. Look at that. Look at that. Right there. Yeah, that's that's not good. If you, if you expose all four guns when fire is coming right at you, you will get citadeled if they are shooting AP. It's pretty much a guarantee. In fact, you will see quite early on in this just how easy it is to citadel this ship. And... Well, you know, it is what it is. This ship's, this ship's defense is entirely in mobility and not in her armor. It's not very easy to bounce things with her armor. You know, that 6mm isn't stopping anything at the bow and the stern. And the only thing that that 76mm is going to bounce is going to be... I mean, if you catch a battleship shell really shallow, I guess, but for the most part, it's going to be cruiser and destroyer fire. A well-played destroyer, though, is going to be able to pick up all the clues that you're going to go broadside and punish you with AP. Believe it or not, if you're in a U.S. or German destroyer, your AP is strong enough that you can citadel this ship. Uh, so we're headed down to sea, and... Uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna try and support our destroyer coming in here. We got a we got Mr. Uh, Karlsruhe that is also joining us, and he he can't, plays kind of a critical role a little bit later on. Not not to spoil too many things. Tactics wise, uh, trying to find islands for some hard cover, especially since we got battleships. You know Wyoming used to have a pretty short range, but pretty much now if you spot them, they're they're able to shoot. Which is not a good thing for me anyway. So we got ourselves a Bogatir here, but aha, Mr. Isakaze is laying a smoke screen. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn that way after firing at the Bogatir and go straight on into this smoke and pray that we can get in there before we get deleted by well, there's uh, <laughs> three of their five battleships, and we've already started a fire. Woohoo! So turning in here now to, to deal with this Nassau and look at 7,200 hit points just taken right off by that Nassau. Citadel, not, not the first shell I take in this game is a Citadel hit from a German battleship. Look at this accuracy. This is the other thing too. Look at, look at how, okay, so we got a, a pretty good shot grouping there and uh, 1,500 damage. That's not too bad. Quick check of the torpedoes to see which way he's going to go, because he's almost in range. That one, we bracketed him. We hit him with two, but, uh, yeah, there's two, and we got two fires out of that whole ordeal. <laughs> yeah, this thing starts fires. We're up to three fires already. That's why I said it feels like this thing has a 60% fire chance. Well, since he's burning, we're going to go ahead, and we're going to try and shoot at the Wyoming. Now, th this, is, this is like... Yep, oops. <laughs> Led him a little bit too far there. So we got ourselves in a sow. He's, he's, he's going broadside. He, he took... He canceled my... That was rude of him. Check my torpedo arcs here. And we started him on fire twice again. Yeah. Yeah, this is like a zow at... Uh, oh, well, we got Arya Suzuki is blocking my torpedoes. So we're going to have to wait for him to clear the area. And we're going to go ahead and launch torpedoes. We're right at the edge of our range here. The reason why I launch torpedoes is just, you know, an extra insurance. Hey, look, another fire. Extra insurance just in case, you know, he somehow survives and continues on in a straight line. I really don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. We're up to 16,272 damage, and he is basically dead. So we will switch to the Wyoming in an attempt to get the Wyoming on fire. Now, shooting at a target that is exposing a broadside, it seems like the accuracy is a little bit better. That has to do with the way this game renders dispersion. In real life, dispersion on ships is an ellipse along the line of fire, with the long part being on the, long, the line of fire. The uh, game model renders it opposite of that. Basically, well, there's the Karlsruhe playing his critical role of distracting that Wyoming. And we started the Wyoming on fire. Woo-woo! Um... 
Anyway, in game the uh, dispersion ellipse is actually length. It's, uh, it's um, 90 degrees to that. Basically, your dispersion circle is going to uh, be along the length of a ship exposing its broadside rather than along the length of a ship exposing a nose-on or tail-on profile. So that Bogatier managed to start us on fire like a jerk face, but we are just going to continue to ignore him and sail away. Eventually we'll get out of his range. That Isakaze is there that's doing a very good job of distracting this Wyoming. And once again, we started him on fire. We're up to eight fires already in this match. Have yet to fire a single salvo of AP, which is fine by me. And look, another fire. <laughs> yep. So this uh, this ship is, is like I said, it, sometimes it feels like a 60% fire chance with, with those guns. That they just uh, napalm infused shells. We'll just go with that. Uh, I think that Isakazi got screwed out of a torpedo hit. Still got one on him. And we got salvos going in. Left him with 24, and then we get the kill. So we're up to 36,500 damage with a kill, a cap assist. And things are looking mighty sketch at this point in time, team-wise. We've got ourselves two Miyogi. Oh, I guess it wasn't a, a, a Isuzuchi. It was a Miyogi that crossed my line of path. We've got two Miyogis there that are both traveling to the south. We've got a Wyoming that is also traveling to the south, as well as our Isakaze. Now, I've tried to point out on this map that uh, we should probably be headed towards B and not towards, you know, the lone Wyoming that's going to the corner of the map. It was really not that important to get him dead right away. With three battleships down here, their fire is really important in the middle of the map. Unfortunately, we're not going to get it. Thought maybe the Bogatier would beach himself there, but he ended up not doing that. We're going to use our stealth to get ourselves into a good firing position, to may maybe behind an island or something. Uh, island camping with this ship is particularly effective because of the incredible fire starting chance. So uh, we're going to head over towards the islands there on the 8 line. In, in particular... Um, we might actually make a stop over here on the, the small island in the number six line before the island in the number seven line. So once we get into that area, we've got some hard cover between us and the enemy. We can go ahead and engage. But you're going to see here just how that's probably not going to work out terribly well because nothing's really in range. Bogatier, not in view. Uh, we've got a Wyoming that's within range, just barely. But he's behind a mountain and I can't really see where he's at. So that makes him kind of a non-target. Well, we gotta we've gotta make up our mind on what we're gonna do. And down goes that Wyoming that you know the remainder of our team it went and chased after. Our uh, our only other ship left is all the way up north by himself. That's not a good sign ever. And he's gonna die, and we're gonna lose a lot of vision here. So we got Mr. Uh, Dugway and. No, he's not going to really be in range. This Wyoming is, but there's a mountain in the way. I don't really want to spoil it, let him know that I'm targeting him just yet. Get going and, and get to... Uh, well, now he knows I'm targeting him. We're backing up here to try and stay behind this island, and down goes that Wyoming that was doing all the spotting. So we are at a point where we need targets bad, and we also don't want to get too gung-ho because... Our whole team is still in the south, and this is, this is, I've said it before, map situational awareness is absolutely critical to doing well in this game, and if you don't have it, man, it, it's not a good day for, for the team, and part of situational awareness is putting yourself in places where you can be useful towards the end of the match. If you are in a slow battleship, looking at you, Wyoming, you probably don't want to go to one of the extreme edges of the map because it basically takes you out of the fight for the rest of the game. Well, since nothing's going on here, I'm going to launch some torpedoes here uh, just down the channel just to see. I mean, if that, uh, if that French cruiser decides to come in, we'll be able to engage him. And because we've got hard cover coming up, I'm just going to go ahead and fire at him, uh, launch some, uh, some shells at him, get a couple hits in. Just some parting shots, really. Nothing nothing too damaging. 
just enough to let them know that I'm here. While we go around this island here, we've got Isakazi that's coming up here. Looks like our battleships are coming up here too. Oh, not, not again, not a, not my recommendation. Looks like that uh, French cruiser thought I was going to go somewhere I wasn't going. That's fine, whatever. I don't care. He missed me. Okay, so up here we've got a Wyoming, and we're going to have that Dugue that's going to come around the, the corner as well. So we got to pay attention to those two ships, but we also want to make sure that we keep a pretty solid bead on the other ships that were up by A. And until we get some spotting of those ships, it's hard to really know where they're at on the map. Which means a lot of guessing is actually going to go into, uh, you know, launching torpedoes, etc. Now, I know that basically those, all those ships over there are going to want to come and engage these battleships. Chances are they're going to come straight down this middle part. And me personally, being as I'm playing this as a rather large destroyer, I kind of want to stay in this middle area with this giant island for cover, but this Isakaze is telling me that he's going to smoke and that I should wait for his smoke. Well, I turned, thinking, and then I looked down at the chat after he said that and was like, uh, okay? <laughs> um, not really in a good position to, to help him out, but uh, we'll, we'll give it a, a, a shot. I mean, I, I generally speaking would not recommend this even with smoke uh, unless he's going to let... Ooh, we got a torpedo hit on something. Nice. We got that Ishizuchi. And really what what actually has happened here is uh, I'm in a pretty good position to take advantage of this Ishizuchi with torpedoes. And uh, this Isakaze is not one of those ships that I'm really interested in. Like, he's 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 off. Being up there would take me out of the fight. Now, the problem is, is he is up here by his lonesome and has no support in dealing with that French cruiser because I am currently turning and going the other way. We need to turn around and try and help him if we can, but it's going to be way too late before I can get to him. So, now, he's dead. Managed to start him on fire, though. <laughs> We've got ourselves a burning baguette. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so I switched to AP there because we had broadside French cruiser. Yep, not really doing a whole lot of damage to a battleship with that. So we're going to go ahead and switch. And you're going to see healthy dosage of S turns here to try and avoid incoming fire. And for the most part, it does a pretty good job, as you can see. Not too shabby. Continuing to fire... Maybe we can get the Ishizuchi, get ourselves a second kill. We're up to 47,909 damage. Um, we've got torpedoes that are coming up. I'm going to launch a set there in the middle of that. Maybe one on the left side as well. So I'm detected. There's that Bogatier. Launch the first set of torps. Launch those at the Bogatier. Go ahead and engage the Bogatier. And continuing our S turns. Look at this. Yep, yep. Look at that pro dodging going on. So that's what I was talking about with the S with the S turns. Now there is a disadvantage to this. You can only ever engage with two guns, and that it's kind of the caveat you have to deal with. It's the the gameplay element you've got. So we've got two two turrets that can engage right now, making as best use as we can while trying to stay alive. Looks like we got the Bogatier on fire. Which is good. Maybe we can start him on fire again. Got to hit him. And again, S curves, S curves, S curves. Heck, that that shell landed on my on my belt armor and still did damage. Uh, it's not even high explosive that he was shooting that time. Thankfully, though, tier three uh, tier three dispersion not helping the Bogatier out. So again, we're gonna launch torpedoes. Pretty, I don't want to call it a widespread because those were both narrow spread launches, but we launched them in a wide pattern. The first set was really was wide one direction. The other set was wide the other direction. It's because I'm anticipating him doing this uh, turning. He's basically acting like I, I am and doing S turns. And my hope is, is that he does this. Yep, those, those torpedoes are looking mighty good. Yep. Oh, he's red misting. I think it's going to be too late for him. 
He gets a couple shell hits in, but it's not going to help him because down he goes to torpedoes. We're up to 66,134 damage. We are in a tier 3 cruiser, folks, in a tier 4 fight. And now I've got this French cruiser that's not even paying attention to me that is basically stationary. I'm going to try and do as much damage to him as possible because at this point I am, I've written myself off. I have legitimately said, eh, there's a pretty low probability that I'm going to survive this match. A quick little uh, straightening out of our S and then a jam over on the rudder and we managed to avoid his incoming fire, but we are still landing shell hits on him. Meanwhile, I'm trying to do my best to engage, um, you know, my situational awareness there. Again, you want to randomize these S curves so that you're not completely predictable. But look, look, at, look at how effective that has been, though. So he is distracted by another ship that's shooting at him, which is fantastic because that means that I am alive. I like being alive with this low hit points. Uh, if I had Adrenaline Rush, this ship would be probably even more ridiculous. We, however, need to cap a, a, a point. We need B. Unfortunately, we don't have B. <laughs> uh, oop, we started him on fire. <laughs> we have 14 fires in this match. Oh, my goodness. 70,000 damage in a Tier 3. So we're, we're busy. We're, we're getting busy here. Um, and, and honestly, coming back to this, you know, he's a... He's a full tier higher than I am, and I, I, he's just getting played, you know? we're Again, we're going to launch torpedoes. These are going to be kind of aerial denial torpedoes. If he comes through either one of those channels, there's a slight chance that they could hit him. He's going to have to come out at just the right speed for those to really hit him. I'm going to go up to this island where I was at before. We're going to try and make it work. Okay, so I something's spotting him, obviously. Oh, it must be one of our Miyogis. So I fired a salvo over the island, and look, another fire! <laughs> Yo, dog, I hear you like fire, so we put a fire on your fire, so you can be on fire while you're on fire. <laughs> oh, my. Down. Yep, he's going down. There he goes. So he went down, and now it is two battleships and a cruiser versus a cruiser and a battleship. The Dene is pretty healthy. The Wyoming is pretty healthy. Our two ships, they're about half health. I mean, I don't want to say that we're in fantastic shape, but we're far from being in bad shape. And this Dene here, I'm not really worried about his shell fire coming in over here. I'm in range of him or just outside of his range if I'm not in range of him. But he is very preoccupied with the very large displacement ship right next to him. Their Wyoming has managed to, uh, you know, take some shell fire here, and has, uh, well, he's he he he's in a he's in a all-out brawl with that Miyogi. Props to that Miyogi for for being in a brawl. Our other Miyogi is uh, eating torpedoes. Uh, those those hurt. Don't don't do that. <laughs> Shells breaking on the the Wyoming. Down goes the Dene. Wyoming is all that's left. Oh, looks like he bounced a whole bunch of shells. Somebody quick, finish him. Finish him. Finish him. Oh, what is... No, it's so close. 1,800 hit points. Oh, our Miyogi, and down he goes. Woo. All right. Well, we got ourselves a healthy amount of damage there. 74,408 damage. We got 16 fires, 3 sinks, 1,195 base XP. If we would have gotten another cap, that would have been beneficial. You can see there are 31,000 damage in fires alone. Yeah, that's a big deal. And this thing just starts fires like crazy. Anyway, that's the Tier 3 Tenryu. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.